Hey, welcome back. Simon Lee's here. I'm going to do a, a guitar video all about the Boss GT 100 slash uh, forward slash uh, GT 001. Uh, there's a lot of new guitar effects processors uh, that have come out since Boss's uh, old GT machines. Um, I'm thinking of things such as the the Line Six Helix and the uh, the Kemper. And now we've got the Neural DSP Quad Cortex, uh, which is an incredible machine. But these these machines are really expensive. If you've got a, an, an old Boss GT, and I'm thinking of either a GT8, a GT10, or a GT100, um, before you rush out and uh, and splurge over a grand on a <laughs> on one of the one of the new machines, there might be something you haven't quite looked at. Uh, as a way of getting a natural amp kind of sound um, from from the old GT. So I'm going to talk you through how I've done it. Uh, this has come come about over the last year where uh, I've been doing some recordings for, for the band uh, that I play with. And our drummer uh, is also our sound engineer and he's an extremely picky man. Uh, he has the ears of a bat and he can tell uh, when something isn't quite right. So sounds that I've been perfectly happy with for a long, long time, uh, all of a sudden I'm not. And so I've had to dig deep into the, the bowels of, of the, uh, <laughs> the the Boss GT001 is what I'm using for recording, which is exactly the same as the 100, but it uh, just hasn't got any pedals, but uh, it, works, it works the same way. Um, and I think I've got pretty close. Uh, so, I mean, this, this machine only costs just over 200 quid, you know, 200 UK pounds. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's not a huge, it's not a huge thing, but you can get very similar results using the GT10, um, and the GT8. So I'm going to give you my settings that I'm, that I'm using at the moment and just explain, you know, how you can use those for, for, your, for yourself. Um, okay. The, the four things you need to consider are input game, preamp choice, overdrive choice, and uh, and there's one more thing, EQ. Um, which So those four things have got to be bang on for this to, to work and for it to sound good. So let's delve into it. The first thing, I've got my DAW, my Cubase uh, set so that I can, I can re analyze the signal as it comes directly from the input socket um, and uh, right next to it I've got a track um, which measures the signal as it comes out of the output um, and what you'll see that the, the output one is the one called guitar effects and the the one that's taken directly after the input is guitar DI now on the GT001 and the GT100 uh, what they did differently compared to the earlier models was they removed the meter where you could analyze the signal at any point along the effects chain. I thought that was a huge mistake, to be honest, um, but we can get around it if you've got a DAW and you can uh, use that as a way of setting your, at least your input gains. Um, okay, so I'm recording at 24 bit. So I don't really want the signal to get much above minus 12 dB. So now I'm playing a chord here and I'm hitting the strings quite hard, but if I was doing some lead, which is what I've set this up for, yeah, on the lower strings, it's sort of getting, getting right up there, but But on no, on things like that, it's it's hovering just above minus eighteen, um, getting up towards minus twelve. So for lead, um, that is absolutely fine. But I'll just show you where I set the game. Um, if you go to where the uh, oh by the way, this is Boss Tone Studio for the for the GT. If you've got a GT 001 or a GT 100, I recommend you get this because it's free, which is always good. And uh, it just makes setting, uh, adjusting the settings much more fun and uh, much quicker, to be honest, than trying to work on a little tiny display. Um, so 
where you've got the guitar logo, you click on there, and then that shows you where your uh, guitar level is set to. Now, you, unfortunately, the uh, the machine doesn't remember this setting, um, so if you know you, you you can't save it basically. So you need to check this when you change guitars. Uh, at the moment, this is set to zero dB. It'll go minus or plus, uh, so that's that seems pretty good for for, for what I, I want at the moment. Now, if you look at uh, the preamp first, these machines, these these types of machines are they sell themselves by being able to mimic uh, Marshall, Mesa Boogie, Fender Twin, uh, and all the Voxes, you know that sort of thing, everything in between. Um, what I want personally is I just want it to sound like a guitar amp, you know, um, and I find the best way of doing that on this machine um, is to use a, use a preamp setting which is absolutely characterless. Uh, it's bland, you know, and the best one I've found amongst all the, all the different ones, it's just called Natural Clean. Um, now, if you go down the list, you've got amps that you will recognize uh, the, the JC120 that's a good one um, Tweed you know Vox Drive Vox Lead Matchless Boogie Marshalls various Marshalls um, Mezzo Rectifier Soldano 5150 you've got all kinds but I find I get the by far the best result on this machine I'm not going to say it's going to work on the uh, on the Helix or the Kemper or any of those um, it's just the one that Basically, this this is a boss creation. You know that, that it's it's a, it's a, a, a characterless amp, um, and it works really well if you put an overdrive pedal or a distortion pedal into the front of it, uh, which is what I've done. Now, before I get into that, uh, I'll just play what it sounds like on its own. I'll get rid of the compressor for now. Uh, I'll get rid of the EQ, and this is basically it. <laughs> At the moment, it sounds quite bassy. I've done all the editing that I wanted to do on this, so I'm not going to take you through all that uh, all that process. Although you can see um, on the screen where the amps controls are set, uh, the bass is just below half. Middle treble and presence are all pretty low. The level is uh, at eighty percent. On a lot of amps like Marshalls, things like that, um, when you set the, the master level high, that gives you power amp distortion, uh, which which is sometimes desirable, I suppose, if you're using an actual guitar amp. Um, on this amp setting, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. It's just, I've used that level as a way of trying to uh, keep the level going into my DAW roughly the same as if I was just plugging straight in. You know. But you can hear that, it's a nice warm sound. Um, I'm using my neck pickup. Um, see, I've, I've got, the, got the switch on the neck setting. I'll put it back to the bridge. You know, it's, it's all right, it's, it's quite pleasant. So, there's a few things to talk about other than what I've already mentioned. The gain, I've set to 45. If I go much higher than that, it will add distortion, and I don't really want that from the preamp itself. I want to, I want, I want to use the distortion pedal if, to create the distortion sound. So, moving on to the to the next page, that's interesting. Um, I set it to the original speaker type. I have absolutely no idea what Boss intended this to be played through, whether it was a two by twelve or a four by twelve or a one by twelve or or what. Um, I've, I don't know, but I'm going to trust that they know what they're doing. You've got various different types of microphone you can choose. Um, I, I've gone all around, uh, you know, I've tried every different permutation, and I've settled on one which mimics the, the, the Neumann U87 valve mic. Uh, it's a lovely mic, and I find that it tends to sort of reduce the, the, the nasty high frequencies that, that you, you, you often get with the GTs, to be fair. 
Um, if I set it to a, a Shure SM57, which is what I would probably use um, in front of my, my cab, it's very clear, um, but it's a bit brittle and it's a bit harsh, so I'm avoiding that. For a long time, I used the, uh, the Sennheiser 421, which is a great mic, really nice mic, um, and it's not bad, you know, it's a little bit warmer. Um, there's a, there's, I think that's an AKG 451, but I've gone for the, the 87, it's a little bit darker, um, and it's, it's just got rid of, or helps to get rid of some of that nasty top end that you really don't want. Um, okay, mic distance, uh, you've got two settings there, on mic or off mic, basically, um, it's, it's whether the, the, the mic is pointing sort of directly at your speaker, or if it's sort of pointing off a bit of an angle. If it's pointing directly at the speaker, you're going to tend to get a brighter sound. So I've chosen that. Um, I thought the off mic, it just sounded a little bit muffled to my ears. And the position, uh, I've got it four centimetres away from the centre of the cone. Uh, again, if you've got it right on the centre, it's a very bright, harsh sound. So I'm kind of... Um, some of the settings are to exaggerate the top end, some of them are to, to get rid of it, but uh, I don't want the thing to sound dull. That's the thing. Um, so the top end that I've... The things that I've done to sort of exaggerate the top end uh, haven't impacted that they haven't created that horrible harshness that you, that you sometimes get that's what we're trying to that's what i'm trying to show it's possible to kind of do this with this uh this machine uh okay look okay so that's the basic um amp sound the overdrive that i've chosen and i've again there's there are a lot of overdrive options on this uh it's based on the proco rat this is the only one to me which sounds, makes it sound like a guitar amp. Check it out. You know, it's a nice sound. It's a warm sound, and it, but it's still got plenty of... Um, again, with some of the other settings, you tend to get this this harshness. You know, this this sort of it, when your plectrum hits the strings, you get this kind of uh, I don't know. It's 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 like a sound that shouldn't be there. Um, that's the only way I can describe it. Uh, it's quite a powerful distortion, I'm, and I've got the drive set quite high. It'll go. It's probably on, on about two thirds there, you can see. Um, but if I wanted to play something like... You know, it's more than capable of that sort of thing, you know. Um, um, you know, it's not lacking in, uh, <laughs> in sort of heaviness. Um, the tone controls, you've got one called tone, which is basically treble, uh, one called bottom, which is your, your, your bass. I've reduced a tiny bit on those. I've been really kind of picky. Um, you know, they're, they're roughly in the middle, but I've just backed them off slightly. Um, and the effect level, again, I've just set that so that when I uh, check my meters on my uh, DAW, uh, they're not... <laughs> You know, they're not, they're not going much above minus 12. Um, okay, so like I said, there are a lot of overdrive options and distortion options on this. Um, for a cleaner kind of distortion setting, if you, you, you know, if, if, if you want something a little bit milder, um, excuse me, natural overdrive is quite nice. Um, <coughs> Um, that's one that responds quite nicely to um, adjustments that you can make on the on the volume control. The rat doesn't, to be honest. You've got to have the volume almost off before it starts to kind of clean up. But uh, but that's all right. If you're using this for a recording thing, it, it really doesn't matter. 
so I'll just, just find the rat again. There we go. Um, so that's a nice sound. The last thing uh, I need to talk about is the EQ. And back in the day, I used to use the, the metal zone setting as the distortion thing. Um, and the, the EQ settings that I had to use to make that sound good were extreme, to say the least. They're still quite odd. Um, you've got two pages of settings that you can sort of look at here, but um, I'll just mention, I'll look at page two first. I've used, uh, page two has got the low cut and the high cut. The low cut I've set to 100 hertz, and you can kind of see that if I just play on the graph if you look below uh, on, on along the bottom line you've got the the frequencies it goes 50 100 200 500 and so below 100 the signal's slightly subdued, which is good, because I don't want it to sound wimpy. Uh, I, I don't want a sound that's lacking in bottom end, but I don't want it to be, um, you know, I don't want it to swamp the bass. Uh, I used to, when I used to play in Budgie, uh, Burke used to moan about me being in his range uh when i when i played damp and uh, chords like that you know and uh and he, and he had a point to be fair so uh since since then i've been i've always been a little bit wary about putting too much bottom end on because it doesn't do you any favors you know um it ends up getting lost in the mic but it it sort of it means that your guitar ends up being quieter than than what you you'd like it to be <laughs> Now, if you look at the other end of the graph whilst I'm playing, you can see above 5K, there's very little happening. And that's because I've used a, a high cut of 4K, 4 kilohertz. Um, now, on the, on the GT, GT100, GT001, and all the other uh, GT pedals, these cuts are not that extreme they're, they're, they're quite they use quite a shallow slope it's not it's not a case of everything past four kilohertz gets chopped off and and you know you lose all your top end you don't it just kind of uh, attenuates it slightly so you, it, you know um the further up, up the frequency spectrum you go the you know the quieter those frequencies get uh so again this is all to do with trying to make it sound trying trying to give it get you a guitar sound that um that mimics what you what you get when you're sitting in front of a guitar amp, because a guitar amp speaker doesn't res, d doesn't uh, generate frequencies that high, you know. Um, and this this is one of the things that people don't understand about Boss pedals. The clean sounds tend to be very hi-fi. Um, you know, if you if you put them through a, a PA speaker. It, it, it'd sound amazing, you know, um, but when you're playing rock sounds, you know, such as that, uh, you don't want that extreme top end um, because that's not, you know, it, it, it's just not a nice sound. So that's why I use uh, the high cut like that, just to, just to, again, just to get rid of the, the nasty frequencies. Okay, going back to page one where most of the settings are for the EQ. The low gain, I haven't touched it. The low mid gain, I've taken down by minus six. Uh, if I put that back up to zero, so it doesn't sound massively different really, but um, when you've got it loud, and especially when you've got it in a mix, I don't know, minus six, it's just, it's what they call a scooped sound. Um, the low mid gain, it refers to the low mid frequency, which is 400 hertz. So I'm taking 400 hertz down by six decibels. And that means I'm literally halving the volume of that frequency and the sum of the frequencies either side. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's just, it just makes it sound less dull, basically. Um, the high gain, 
hasn't got a frequency number attached to it it's just basically treble uh, and I've boosted that by nine that's basically that, that's kind of because I've taken all that high frequency out using the high cut um, but uh, <laughs> I just felt it needed a little bit more sparkle so I've put that sparkle back by increasing the high gain by nine which is a huge amount to be honest but I can do that because I've got it to play with, you know, because I've 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 taken the uh, the bulk of it out. The what's left? The high mid frequency I've set to four kilohertz. Now I remember Guthrie Govan talking about four kilohertz as a magic uh, number, and he's kind of right. Um, so I've boosted the four kilohertz by three decibels. Um, I say it pro probably wouldn't work so much for vocals, maybe, or well, perhaps it would. Um, <laughs> But again, it's it's helped it's helped to get a little bit of crispness there without uh, you know with, without kind of making it piercing you know um, I say three decibels it's not a huge amount uh, and especially as I've used the you know the high cut like I mentioned um, other things to to sort of make it sound nice what I find you've got to be careful with the going back to the overdrive if you have the the drive setting too high it can sound a little bit gritty and a little bit fizzy um, you know but you might find that you haven't quite got enough sustain you know the notes might be dropping off before you before you want them to I mean, it's, it's not bad to be honest yeah I mean that's that, that's singing nicely but if you wanted to do it a little bit more but without making it sound you know any more gritty or nasty if you use the compressor you've got to make sure you pick it right <laughs> um, yeah okay it's probably not doing a fat lot to be honest but these settings have come about through a long time of sort of sitting there you know and being focused on the <laughs> on the job so yeah i'm always kind of cautious to use extreme settings but uh, but i suppose it's a bit of a comfort blanket really for having the compressor on there uh just to finish it off i've got a little bit of delay and a little bit of reverb i'm not going to go deep into the settings for those they're quite easy to set up to be honest and they only they don't really affect the tone of, of the sound. It's only the sort of icing on the cake, if you like. Uh, and it's only when you kind of stop stop the sounds that, uh, that you kind of realise that they're there. Um, so that's that's it, really. I mean, I've got the master set to uh, 100. That's just the default setting for, for um, patches you know collections of, uh, of effects on the on the GT across the GT range I think it's it always tends to be set to 100 um, and that's it so I'm gonna say if you want uh, clean sounds there's there's more settings available probably than than what I've described here but for distortion sounds for, for <laughs> You know, if you, things like that, that kind of rhythm playing, you know. Um, you know, this, the, the, the combination of the, the really bland characterless amp with the rap pedal in front of it. I mean, people used to, used to say about the rap pedal, it was a, an amp in a box. And I think that's a really good description because it has got compared to something like a metal zone or a, or a boss distortion or something like that it has got a much more organic uh, quality to it and if you're trying to get the sound out of a box like this which mimics um you know a marshall stack say uh i think the rat is is the best is the, it's the best pedal out there you know it's um you know there might be i mean i'm guessing 
Wampler or JHS have probably got a, got an equivalent that, that does a similar sort of thing and it costs a lot more money. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's a it's a great pedal. I mean, um, Josh got he he loves the rap. You know, I've watched a lot of his videos and uh, and yeah, it's one of his favourites, and I can see why. Works pretty well on bass as well. Uh, so I think if you're considering maybe splashing out on a on a Kemper or a, or a, I mean, I if if I was gonna gonna get one of the the new tools i'd probably go for the the quad cortex because i think that for, from what i've seen of that is an absolutely incredible machine but it costs one and a half grand um, and if you've already got a boss gt uh, try these settings first you might you, you, you know you might uh, you might find actually this is pretty good um so it's it's certainly uh setting it up this way has, has made me want to play more um you know, it, it's play, play has been a lot more fun. I find with these settings as well, and this is kind of how I've tested them. I can have them a lot louder. I better not turn it up because it will distort. But uh, but I can get these really loud without, uh, and and the sound doesn't make me go oh. You know, it's just well, yeah, come on. Um, so <laughs> it's and that's that's what you want when you're playing the guitar. You know, um, so those are my top tips. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please hit the subscribe button and the, the like button and all the all, all the usual stuff that you're supposed to do on these on these things. Um, and fingers crossed, I'll be able to make another video very soon. Thanks for watching.